that great job. I'll be happy when I graduate. I'll be happy when. And if you do that, you put happiness on this cognitive horizon that you'll never achieve because your brains are wired differently. The minute you get a good job, what does your brain tell you? I got to get a better job, right? The minute these kids get an A in one class, what's their brain tell them? I got to get an A in another class. And so that's what we do. Our brain sets these goals. And so we're always going towards these goals. So if happiness is where the goal is, you're never going to achieve happiness because your brain's just going to set another goal. So again, it's that we get rid of that. So we only know 10% is your job and your environment. 40% is what you do to actively be happy. At the beginning of the year, if you said to your um, significant other or partner, hey, I'm going to get in shape. And every day I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do weights on this day. I'm going to do cardio on this day. And in three months, I'm going to be in shape. But for those three months, instead of going to the gym, you went home and you sat on the couch and ate Doritos and watched Netflix, right? At the end of three months, can we pretty much know why you're not in shape, right? It's pretty clear. But here it is. The, thing, the same thing happens with mindfulness in the brain. Are you taking the time to break those neural connections to projection and rumination to strengthen your connections to present moment? Are you working on that? Are you purposely trying to be happy? And it's funny because I just finished, I told you that lifelong learning class that I teach. I had a physician in there. He, he practiced for 45 years. And he said to me, he said, Jamie, this just blows my mind. He goes, I practice 45 years. I still run six miles every day. I have a really clean diet. And he goes, not once. He goes, I've been taking such great care of my body, but not once have I thought about, am I taking care of my mind? And he goes, and it just, he goes it just is, it's so crazy for me to have so not seen this. And so that's really where the challenge comes in, is that you've got to learn to pay attention to you, to learn you, all of you, the comfortable and the uncomfortable, to recognize when you are going into, you've had vicarious trauma and you're going into sympathetic, to recognize that you have the power to deregulate that. And it's just going to be through your behaviors and your actions that you actually start seeing change occur. So here's my email. If you want Jamie's tidbits, I'm happy to share them. Anytime if you have questions, I, you know, for me, I have a job that I absolutely adore at ASU. I love doing this because it is, it's a pay it forward. It's, it helps me contribute to something bigger than who I am. And hopefully if one person starts doing this and they model it for others, right, that's how we start seeing change occur. It starts with one person, one time becoming more responsive. So that is all I have for you. So now you can clap if you want to clap. Thank you. Thank you. That would have been awful if you didn't, right? That could have been really painful. <laughs> okay. So Thank much. you so much. That was, I really... that was awesome. Thank you. Okay, so now we need you to very mindfully...